question. First and foremost, I want you all to know that this is not a model, this is not a replica, this is a real German submarine that fought during World War II. Well, it was captured in 1944. It serves as a permanent war memorial to the 55,000 men and women who fought for their country and lost their lives in the Battle of the Atlantic during World War I and World War II. And over the next 23 minutes or so, we will enter the UFAB 05. We will learn what life was like for the men on board. We will learn the story of its capture. Now, before I go any further, let me ask you all a question. What were your first impressions of the UFAB 05 when you first saw it? What did you think about the size? It's huge. My son, my son compared it to the, the scene in uh, the Star Trek the motion picture where the, they go around the Enterprise and dry duck. Excellent. He said it was amazing. It was just like that feeling. Well, huge is definitely one way to describe it. As it stands today, it is 31 feet tall, 252 feet long, and it weighs 693 tons. Now, when it was fully loaded, it could weigh over 1,100 tons. It was commissioned into the German Navy in 1941, and its mission was to sink and destroy merchant supply ships, carrying vital war supplies to Brazil. It was captured on June 4, 1944, by NATO Chicagoan and U.S. Naval Captain Dan Gallery. The American Hunter Killer Task Group 22.3. Their primary goal was to destroy German boats. But folks, before we enter the U505 today, there are a few things that I want you all to keep in mind. First, if you're five foot five or taller, please watch your hat as we enter and travel through specific parts of the boat. Also, please feel free to take photographs. Typically, we do not allow videography on this particular tour, but it is okay in this particular circumstance, okay? Thank you. Also, there will be lights and sound effects for the entire tour, so please stay with me. Lastly, there will be additional time at the very end of the tour for any questions or comments that you may have. Is that fair? Wonderful. So imagine if you that you're preparing for a 90-day journey on board the UFO 5. What are the two most important things you think you'll need to take on board for survival? Just shout them out. Food and water. Now, there was a limited amount of space on the UFO 5. So the crew had to store food wherever they could find room for the boat. And there were canned breads and beans underneath the bunks. They would hang sausages and fresh fruit baskets from the pipes above their heads. And in fact, one of the two bathrooms on board the UFO 5 was completely packed with food. Now, this meant that for more than half of the time that the crew was at 59 men shared not two bathrooms, they shared one bathroom. Literally, I think they're making the best of the battery. You mentioned water. There was a limited supply of fresh water. Now, this meant that the crew could only use water for three important reasons cooking, drinking, and maintaining the batteries which powered the boat's electrical supply. Now, some of you may have noticed I haven't said anything at all about hygiene. That's because for the 90 days of the crew's at the sea, shade, they couldn't brush their teeth, they couldn't bathe. Instead, they swab with alcohol. You can imagine how impressive it was. On top of that, they had one uniform for the entire 90-day tour. Now, if that was not enough, heat was another condition that made life on board the Yukon Five very, very difficult. Temperatures could reach up to 110 degrees in specific parts of the boat. Well, now that we've set the scene, Let's enter the UFA 5 and see what a typical day was like, shall we? Welcome, come on in. We've got plenty of room all the way in. This way, actually, if you come this way. Sure. Awesome. Thank you. Come on in. It's a tour. All the way in. Come on in. Come on in. If you go this way, excellent. Now I'm just going to pull this way. Oh. Thank you so much. So I'd like to welcome each of you to the petty officers' quarters. Now, this is where the petty officers or the middle ranking men slept and spent their spare time. Now, this side of the U505 appears pretty much the way that it did. But it was captured in 1944. However, for your safety and convenience, we've made a few modifications. Now, the first thing that we did is we created this entrance that you all just walked through. Now, when the U505 was in operation, the main point of entry and exit would have been through a hatch on the top of the boat. Also, we've lowered the